What is going on, guys? It's your boy Malik back with another YouTube video. Roll to 100 subs, y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe, like, comment, share, all of that. I want to get that out the way before I even get the video popping because, like I know, I don't know if y'all going to look at this in the next minute. So I need to get this out now. We going up, y'all. We going up. Roll to 100 subs. But let's get into what I'm here for. I'm here with some NBA news, man. NBA Eastern Conference news. Um, and, and when I say news, it's not like I'm here to break any break any news that y'all probably don't know about. I just like to look around the standings, look around the league, and just see what's going on. And I know at the beginning of the season, you know, I gave y'all my sleepers. And right now, they're kind of like middle of the pack. The Wizards are doing pretty good so far. But um, I want to talk about the teams that I did not touch on at all that are at the top of the Eastern Conference right now. So right now, we got the Sixers at the at the number one spot. We got the Heat at number two spot. We got the Bulls number three. Did, did I see this coming? Did I see this happening at the beginning of the season? N mind you, the Nets are... I don't, I'm not sure where the Nets are, but they're not in the top three. I'm not even sure they're in the top five. They might be, but... Right now, the three teams that are at the top of the Eastern Conference are teams that I did not ex really see being at the top. And it's still early in the season, but what I've seen from these three teams is 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 good. Like they they look like a le they look like legit teams that you should be scared of for the rest of the season. So let me just start with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now the 76ers they have been doing this without Ben Simmons. And, you know, the whole mess with him and he's coming to practice. Well, excuse me. He came. Yeah, he came to practice. I'm not sure if he practiced, though. He, he looked like he was doing a little little something, but it wasn't enough. He left. He's taking a mental break. He's not re mentally prepared to come back and play. But that did not stop the Sixers at all. It didn't stop them. They... Continue to be dominant on defense. Offensively, they haven't they haven't lost a beat. Like they, they haven't. I mean, you have Joel and B. You know he's gonna get you 20, 25, maybe 25, 30 a game. Um he's he's good defensively. So I mean they they haven't they haven't lost a beat, bro. They're still a solid team without Ben Simmons. And they weren't even playing with Tobias Harris last week, and they were still winning games. They beat the Bulls. Um, I'm not sure they just beat last night. I am recording this on Tuesday, and this should come out on Tuesday. Forgot who they played last last night, but they are beating teams without their superstars. And excuse me, Joel Embiid didn't even play last night, so they were out. They were without Joel Embiid. Uh, I was about to say Steph. Seth did play, and I think that's probably a big reason why they've been so they've been able to float on offense consistently because Seth Curry is is consistent. And I mean, you can't talk, you can't forget about Tyrese Maxey. Maxey has been good. Um Korkmaz continues to to be a threat from from the perimeter. Um Matisse Thybul has to be right now first team all defense. I remember watching the Hawks when they played the Hawks maybe 2 weeks ago. And he was eating the Hawks up alive. I think he had like three or four steals, a couple of blocks, pat, playing the passing lanes. Like, dude was just on it all game. And when you got a player like that on your team, it's going to be kind of hard to, to, to stop stop a team like that, and especially when a whole team is locked in. They have, a, they have good, solid role players, man. And I know Drummond just came off the bench last game, had like 25 boards. So that was a good pickup for them in the offseason. Like, this team is rolling. They look good. Man, this team is going to be scary. Like, but as always, the Sixers seem like a regular season team to me. They do get in the regular season. Get them in the playoffs. Whole different stories. Half court game. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it works out. We'll see if Ben comes back. Because right now, I know some news dropped like yesterday talking about how um he actually went to go seek help from the team instead of his own professional help. So it looks like he's going he might come back soon or whatever he's mentally ready, but um the Sixers look good without him. Now the Miami Heat. Man, man, man. A funny story about this is during the offseason when they were picking up 
when they had when they picked up Cal Lowry and they picked up PJ Tucker and they picked they picked up one of the Morris brothers. Everybody around me was like, "Man, it's it's not a, it's not enough. It's not enough." And I and I was trying to buy into it as well. I was like, "Okay, maybe it's not enough." But for some reason, I was like, "Yo, no, this is enough. Like, this is scary." And I mean, you know, you look at last year what happened to them in the playoffs and during the season, during the regular season. They were kind of up and down. You know, Jimmy had COVID earlier in the season, so they had to recover from that. And then they get demolished, embarrassed against the Bucks in the first round of the playoffs. But at the same time, still got Bam. You still got Jimmy. You still got Duncan Robinson. You still got pieces like Deadman, who who's good off the bench as, uh, as a backup center. You still got Tyler Hero, who kind of looked like he was kind of struggling last year, but... Now, you can't say anything about any of them guys right now because they are balling and they might be one of the best. They might be the best defensive team in the league. The last time I looked at the stat, they were like maybe number one in defensive in defensive rating. But yo, what is so dangerous about this team is that they can switch and you still are going to, and I'm not, I'm not going to, you, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be, that's all I'm going to say. You're going to be in trouble. Because usually, you know, you think Jimmy's going to guard the best player on the team. You got P.J. Tucker guarding the best player on the team. And then you got Jimmy Butler just floating around off being an off-ball defender. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me fix this real quick. But you got P.J. Tucker guarding the best the best player on the, on the opposing team. And you got Jimmy Butler playing off-ball as a defender. We already know how Jimmy is when he's, um, in the passing lanes and he's able to just play off ball like that is very dangerous and then you got Bam who can guard one through five so you got three solid defenders on the court already and Cal Lowry is, is no slouch either the only the only problem is dunking and I mean all you gotta do is put him on the offensive player that does the least on the opposing team so, you are in trouble. So, defensively, you, you in the padded lot. You probably you're in the padded cell. you in some trouble. But offensively, you got Tyler Hero now coming off the bench averaging 22 a game. He or probably the lead runner for six men of the year and probably most improved as well. And then you got, you got Jimmy. Jimmy is probably leading the league in the free throws right now, and he's not even, like, getting it the way how James Harden or Trey Young would get it. Like, he's legit. Like, he's earning his his free throw. Like, he's so he's so tough. He's tough. And then, bam, looks like he, he looks better this season. Man, I, I don't know, man. And I think they're 73 right now. Like, this team looks very scary. And, and this is something that I expected to see from them in the offseason. But I did know, cause honestly, once they once they signed Kyle, and they got they moved away from Gordon, I was like, I mean that kind of it's it felt like a lateral move, it did. But Kyle Lowry has shown, like it's something about the Heat culture, man. Like whoever plays for the Heat, you're just gonna play good. If you just buy into the system, you're gonna play good. So, and, and right now, I would say Jimmy Butler is probably. And the M is number one, number two in the MVP race. Like, he's been playing solid, efficient ball, playing great defense. The Miami Heat are going to be a problem this season. I can already tell it. Last but not least, I do not want to forget about the Chicago Bulls. Now, I heard a lot of noise saying that I should have put the Chicago Bulls as one of my sleeper teams. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. They weren't a sleeper team for me. Because I, they were already going to be good. They were all, I already knew they were going to be good. Ain't no sleeping on a team that you already know is going to be good. They got Zach Levine. They got Vucevic. They got DeMar DeRozan. They got Lonzo Ball. They got Caruso. I mean, I mean, I may not be named, naming the names that's like blowing your mind or anything, but defensively, that's a solid team. And they're showing it on the court. And offensively, they're even showing in, they're showing even more improvement because I think last time I checked, they lead the league in four quarter, four quarter points, and I think Demar Derozan is leading that as well. Demar Derozan, the way he has fit into this offense, 
is is crazy. Like, it just seems like as soon as the fourth quarter comes on, he just snaps and he giving you 10 points in the quarter. He giving you 12 points. He he giving you the you already got Zach Levine. He could do all that. But the fact that you can you can play him off ball and you got DeMar DeRozan going to work. You still got threats on the on the on the outside because Lazo can shoot. Lazo fixed his shot. Lazo looks good. You got Vooch who can stretch the floor. He can shoot a three. He can post up. Man, I'm telling you, and they and they haven't even got Kobe White. But I don't know how big of an impact Kobe White is going to make for them. But so far, what they have been working with now has been good. I mean, there's nothing much you can say bad about the Bulls, man. They look real good. So, and I think they're also, they may be 7-3 as well, or 7-2. But I'm telling you, the Bulls, the Heat, the Sixers, three teams that I really did not expect to come out the gate, like, jumping, they look good to start the season. And I'm definitely going to keep my eye on these teams. Of course, there's some teams at the bottom right now that I don't want to discuss at this moment, but I probably will get into them sometime. And just what's going on with them? Because, I mean, some, some we had these teams at the top and they at the bottom, middle of the pack, not looking so good. I should have said something about the Cavs, too, because the Cavs look good. The Cavs look real good, but Colin Sexton went down with the torn meniscus. So I don't know how much that's going to change. But Rubio came out one game, had, what, 30-some 30, 30 points. So if, I don't know if Rubio is going on the tour right now. But um, if he does go on this on this tour, they might just stay afloat in the Eastern Conference. So that's another team you guys want to look out for, um, definitely. But as of now, top three, we got Sixers, we got Heat, and we got the Bulls. Tell me what y'all think about those teams. Um, if you think they can continue this success, I think they will. Just, I mean, when you have teams that are built defensively and then you can sprinkle in the offense I it's it's kind of hard to even beat those type of teams man defensive minded first then offense it's tough man but i appreciate y'all for rocking out with your boy making it through this video as always like i say subscribe like comment share tell your friends tell your family maybe your family likes the miami heat maybe your family likes the chicago bulls Hey, man, maybe if, maybe your family even likes the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, I don't know. I mean, all my friends, I, I got three friends. One friend is a Bulls fan. One fan is a um, one friend is a, is a 76ers fan. And the other fan is a Heat fan. So maybe, hey, are you a Heat fan? Are you a Bulls fan? Are you a 76ers fan? If so, subscribe, like, comment, share. Do all that for your boy, man. Look, we going up. Roll the 100 subs by the end of November. I'm at 55 right now. Let's get it. I don't see why not. For my support post today, I want you guys to go and follow my homegirl, Shauna. Her Instagram is Shauna Imani, but she also has a YouTube at it's Sean Don. She literally does everything on there. She does her hair. She does vlogs. On her Instagram, she does Motivational Mondays. She does a support post for women on Instagram. Like She, she does it all. So make sure y'all go subscribe to her. She does a lot of good work on Instagram and YouTube. Continue to stay blessed. Be easy. Roll the 100 subs. Your boy Leek is out.